I don't get what. <laughs> Good morning, you beautiful people. Except for you, Greg. It is another adventure day with James and I. Got James with me. If you don't know him, he's from this video. Hi. This is the adventure of a lifetime, of a month, this year, of 2017. We are um, in Tennessee right now. We drove a little more than an hour to Irwin, Tennessee. We're gonna get on these railroad tracks that you see up here behind me. Thank you, James. We are going to a little town called Lost Cove. First, some history. Lost Cove is actually located in Yancey County, North Carolina. So we're gonna be hiking from Tennessee back into North Carolina. There, there's a couple different stories of where this town came from. There's one story about it going back to the Daniel Boone times when oh. Daniel Boone was hiking oh, through this area. Oh. A family that was with his group actually had a little girl that got really sick and they couldn't continue on the travel, so they stopped in Lost Cove until they could nurse her back to health. They were walking through the canyon, or through the cove, and they found um, a plateau, which is a flat area, if you don't know, and they built a structure called a lean-to for her to rest in and to get better, and also for the families to have some shelter. A few days after moving, the little girl actually died, and the family couldn't leave her grave just to be taken over by nature, so they, uh, decided to build a couple cabins and make this area. There's no proof behind that story. It was just like a journal entry, but they don't have anything from Daniel Boone saying that that, that backs it up. The other story is during the Civil War, a Union soldier trying to escape hiked into this place and hid pretty much, establishing the town. All right, this is gonna be a great day. I have a great feeling about this trip. I'm also really nervous, we could die. about maybe half maybe a mile into our journey this whole trip you walk the railroad tracks there's two ways into here and we chose the longer but short but longer but easier route we're still walking along the tracks we'll be for probably another mile this is a relatively easy hike and it's it's pretty cool you get to walk this river that's our view for a little over two miles. I think this is the trail that goes up to it. I honestly have no idea. There's no markers. I know that the thing said you walk the, tra you walk the railroad tracks and you'll see a trail. We're about to find out. You ready, James? Let's do this. I wanna know. See this tree behind me with all these holes. I've never seen anything like that before. You know what causes that? It's probably woodpeckers or something, but if you know what causes that, leave a comment in below, down below. I really do want to know what causes that. Whew, I'm by myself now. This is, this hike has pushed me further than I've ever been before. It's actually really level, leveling out where I'm at now because I'm up on top of the ridge almost. This is the first sign that I'm going the right way that I've found. You can see just barely this was a rock wall. And as you get down like right through there where those trees are, there's barbed wire. So I'm going the right way. James got sick. He had to stop. He's sitting down there probably about halfway down the mountain waiting on me to come back. But I think I'm almost there. I refuse to accept defeat on this. I am going to make it. I don't care if I get five minutes there, I am going to make it. I'm, I'm stopping for a second. I'm on the ground. Uh, I got this pain in my chest. 
in my lung. Oh, it hurts. I don't think I'm having a heart attack. Oh man, I'm not playing either. This really does hurt. So I'm stopping, I'm laying down, and I'm gonna do a time lapse. Let's go. I'm okay now. I'm pretty sure I'm in the right place. I believe this is Miracle Rock. This is the story of Miracle Rock. A long time ago, a girl died. And that was in the middle of the winter. And the ground around here especially gets super hard. It freezes. The frost penetrates really deep. So the ground around here gets really hard. So when she died, they couldn't bury her right away. If this is right, up on top of this hill, way up there, is the cemetery for the area. When she died, they brought her out here. And they put her on this rock right there. And they went up, getting the grave ready, preparing to embalm her and all that stuff that they did. They came back and she was alive. That's why they call this Miracle Rock. She was most likely in a coma uh, or had that, uh, I can't remember what it's called, where your heartbeat is so faint. It's actually beating, but it's so faint they can't trace it, especially back then. And she was awake. So yeah, I should be close to there. God, I hope I'm close to there. <laughs> I'm very excited right now. That was Miracle Rock, and this is my first sign of Lost Cove. Almost dying was worth it. Now, this just blows my mind that this is up here. I think it's a 39 Chevy, maybe a 38 Chevy. How they got this up here? And I'm guessing there was this house and this truck belong together. It's insane. Where does peace go? Look at this rock wall behind me. When I was a kid, my dad would give me, especially in the summer, chores to do during the week, chores to do during the weekend. How would you like for your chore to be to build this wall? I mean, obviously there's plenty of rock up here for it, but still, some big rocks, look at that one. Honestly, I don't want to spend a lot of time in this one. And I'm not going to that end of the house. You can see where the floors are falling, but this is one of the structures up at uh, Lost Cove. Supposedly, this house is haunted by the ghost of John B. Tipton. I'm not moving and I hear stuff. Out here. The floors are pretty solid in this place, which is surprising. Oh. Yeah. I don't get why. Oh, that was a wasp. I don't do good with bees, sorry. No one has lived in this area in 60 plus years, 60, 62 years. When I see, when I see this house, it makes me think about um, one of my favorite TV shows, The Andy Griffith Show. And there's a family on there called the Darlins. I want it to win the way we go. This just makes me think of where the Darlins would have lived. Like 
60 years ago or 42 years ago, <laughs> Ernest T. Bass is throwing rocks through the window of this house, wanting a serenade. Jump in the cotton, cotton so white she stayed there all night. There have been several times, I thought I just saw Bigfoot. There has been several times on this trip that I've just been like, I want to stop, I can't do this, my legs are hurting, my chest is hurting. But I pushed myself. And I pushed my limits. I weigh 300 and some pounds. And it has felt like I was going to die doing this. But getting up here and getting to see this, like this house and the other houses, and to see the history that was up here, it's definitely worth pushing yourself. I want to inspire you today, whether you're overweight, underweight, whatever it is, push yourself. Push your limits. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're like me, and you're fat, and you feel like you're lazy, that's all in your head. I, I challenge you to push your limits. I am going to put away my camera. Uh, I've got to hike back to James. I told him if I'm not back by 3.30 to hike out and find help. So hopefully I'll be back to him by 3.30. That's about 45 minutes. I guess this is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that like button if you did. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification button too. That way you get notifications when I do cool stuff like this, which is going to be more often. All right. Have a great night. I will see you tomorrow.